the DS925 Plus. Still drive locked. I still don't like it. I still think it's a major mistake. But here I am finding myself needing to migrate to the DS925 Plus from an older Synology unit with third-party drives in it, meaning I cannot take the drives from the old one, place them in the new one. So what are my options are really for migrating to the DS925 Plus? Well, stick around and we'll talk exactly about that. Alright guys, so just before I get started, there's a, an official sort of a knowledge base article I want you to look at from Synology and just to understand what our options are. So the first option Synology obviously advocates for is using the migration assistant and I can confirm that by the way this is the most comprehensive solution and the least manual. There's of course an option with drive migration meaning taking physical drives from an old NES placing them in the new NES. We all know that since the DS925 Plus is drive locked this option becomes next to irrelevant. There's a third option, configuration backup, but that's not really a migration, it's just configuring uh, configuration backup, but there's a third real option hidden in the FAQs, and that's using hyper backup. But there's a bit of a complication here, because other than the old NES and the new NES, there has to be some sort of a third location that holds the hyper backup data that you can restore from. For a lot of people, there isn't such a location, so this option becomes irrelevant for these people. But if you have this third location, Hyper Backup is definitely a, a legitimate way to do the migration of the data, at least. So I'm going to revert, or at least focus in this video, in the Migration Assistant. But first, this is my old NES, or the source NES. So what do I expect to see being migrated, of course, all the applications and the configurations in them. For example, I have a virtual machine manager and I do have a virtual machine that is up and running and I do expect to see this virtual machine on the new NES in virtual machine manager. I also have a few Docker containers. Again, I also expect to see them in the new NES in configuration in a, a container manager. For example, also we need to take into account that there are a few things that I know that will not be migrated in Synology Migration Assistant. For example, network settings, IP addresses, DNS servers. If your Synology is, for example, joined to a domain, it will not, the new or the destination is, will not be automatically joined to this domain. So this is in general what I expect to see. All the data, of course, and all the applications and all the content in the applications themselves. So let's get this started and we'll start with package manager and let's search for the word migration and let's install the Synology migration assistant. By the way, I made a mistake. I need to install it on the destination as meaning on my new NES. Sorry, let's go to the new NES. The new NES is almost vanilla. I just created the volume and nothing else, so let's go to Package Manager, again, search for Migration, and install Migration Assistant. Now, this is not a tutorial, I haven't practiced it before uploading this video, so if this, uh, if this method I've chosen is not working or not as expected, you'll be sure to be hearing that in the, in the end of the video. So, I did install on the destination as, so this is just a little confirmation, so you will remember that you need to install the Synology Migration Assistant on the new NES and not on the old NES. So let's click on Next and click on Done. Alright, so now the Migration Assistant is installed, so let's go ahead and launch it. By the way, there's a good reminder, when it comes to licenses, licenses are also not being migrated, so you have a license, for example, for surveillance station, you will need to re-enter the license on the new NES. That's a, that's a great reminder right here. Let's click on next. Now we need to specify the old NES 
IP address and of course a username and password. So let's type that in right here. For some reason, I got a, a, an error message, but when I just tried to browse th to my NAS, it found it and it seems to be working now. By the way, I do recommend that at least for the migration period, the source NAS and the destination NAS will be connected to the same subnet or the same VLAN. All right, so this is sort of a, 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 status, a status page where it tells you if it found some sort of a, a, items that need a, a addressing. For example, the memory size indeed on my destination NAS is smaller than the source NAS. Of course, that's something that will be repaired later. So let's click on next. The estimation is about 12 hours to complete the migration. I can assure you that since both of my NAS devices are connected to 2.5 gig uh, network, I think it will take less than that. But once I hit done, the migration will start. So when the migration starts, I will, of course, pause the recording. We will not wait all this time and I will resume the recording once the migration is complete. So for now, let's click on done. Let's click on continue. Let's provide a password once again. And looks like we're off to the races. Now I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once the migration is done. All right, guys, so here's the first unplanned roadblock. After I started the migration process, it started out with preparation with step one and it completed just fine. By the way, it completely removes the uh, any volume that you have created on the destination as and it creates a new one according to what existed on the source NES. That's by the way. But then it got to step two to actually copy the data and it got stuck on 0%. No progress was made until after a few minutes it just paused and it said that network is disconnected. Now can I, I can assure you the network is not disconnected. The network is just fine. I tried restarting the source NES. I tried restarting the destination NES. I tried restarting the migration from scratch. Nothing helped. I looked around online. I couldn't find any knowledge-based articles that gave me enough direction. So I opened a support case with Synology and I will of course keep you posted on what they have to say on this topic. Alright guys, so after about 24 hours, Synology got back to me with a suggested procedure in order to fix my issue. And the bottom line is, whatever they suggested worked just fine. As you can see, the data, the data copying is complete. And now in order to continue, I will need to restart my NAS. So that's what I'm go going to do right now. But the bottom line is that the issue was caused because I had active NFS connections to my source NES or old NES and I did have my Proxmox nodes connected via NFS to this NES and for some reason these connections interfere with the data transfer mechanism so if you find yourself in the same situation drop me a comment in the video and I will get I will just try to post this uh, procedure I got from Synology posted it in a comment or something, I will get it to you in some way. So now the procedure worked, the, the destination as in is now restarting and after it will be restarted and, we, and we, it will be online again, I have, as I said before, a few things that I want to check other than the existence of the data. I will check all that once the device boots back up. All right guys, so the device restarted and I, get, I did get some sort of a, a final step uh, a configuration or a reminder that not absolutely everything is migrated. As I said, network uh, network settings, licenses, etc., etc. This is this is considered a manual configuration, but otherwise the the migration is complete, and it seems like that all my applications that were installed on my source NES are now appearing on my destination as for example if i open hyper backup i can see that all my backup tasks are right there which is amazing let's open container manager as i said other than the data i want to verify that for example container manager and the containers are up and running which they are which is again awesome and virtual machine let's go to virtual machine manager Okay, we'll have to configure it. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on next. 
Yes, select the storage, click on next. I'm assuming this will take a few minutes. I will pause the recording and resume it once it's done. All right, so I'm getting an error message. If you get the same, don't sweat it, it's okay. Just click on okay, click on finish. You will not see your virtual machines at this point. Go to storage and just re-add the storage. Click on start, select your volume, click on done, and now choose to import. And now if we'll go to the virtual machine section, I can see both my virtual machines are right here, ready to be powered on, which is again super amazing. The, the, the migration itself is so smooth, it almost completely picks you up on the new NES where you left off on your old NES. One other thing that I would like to test right now, I, I will maybe do it off camera. I will go to the source NES or the old NES and change its IP address to something else. And then I will change the IP address of this new NES to the IP address that the old NES had, because I would like to see if my Proxmox nodes just pick up the NFS connection to the destination NES. So let me go, so let me go ahead and do that right now. All right, so the IP address is changed. And of course, before I continue, I need to go ahead and enable NFS. And then I'm going to allow NFS connections to the shared folder I, de I dedicated to my Proxmox nodes. All right, so now if everything works correctly, I will be able to log in to my Proxmox cluster and I will be able, hopefully, to see my NFS storage showing up mounted and I will be able to see the content. Here it is, here's the Synology NFS mount and I can already tell it's mounted just fine and I can even see the content of one of the subfolders which tells me that the, at least in, in everything, in, in, when it comes to functionality, everything for me was migrated just fine, very smoothly, except the, the little glitch with the NFS connections that for some reason completely got the migration stuck at first. Otherwise, besides that, the migration with Migration Assistant is super smooth and super thorough. Even, even the containers themselves, the data, the virtual machines, everything was migrated. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you all of course in my next video. Bye everyone.